of services that we can uh, integrate into our own uh, sales formula at our offices. So we came across this product as a very viable product, especially if you're in the uh, that, that POS marketplace. And it's something that you can either lead with, a potential lead, lead in, we're always looking for another reason to call somebody where you're just not another credit card processor seeing how much money you can save them on their credit card processor or another POS. Bless you. Um, so we're very excited uh, to for Mark Mark Klein from uh, NetSureion, That's right. which is now a partner of CoCard, and also we're going to uh, look at a lot of these products. We're looking at uh, developing into a white label for the revenue brand, and not only revenue is just not a point of sale product. We have Revenue Mobile, we have Revenue Gateway. This is another product that we can eventually brand revenue. So this whole co-card revenue is, a, is more of a brand than it is a product. And this is something we'll probably put under that brand too. But without taking any further ado, uh, Mark, take it away. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, thank you for allowing NetSurion to be here. I'm Mark Klein, uh, Vice President of NetSurion. Uh, as Dan said, we partner with CodeCard. We've been working together for, I don't know, eight months or so, and finally got things approved and running, and uh, working with Jenny and Ray and others has been a, a great process so far. So I'm going to give you guys, a, we've got 20 minutes, so I'm going to kind of talk fast. If you need questions, please come by and see me. We'll talk afterwards. But I'm going to give you guys a quick background on our company. So we're cybersecurity, network security, PCI compliance, that what, that's what we do. We're um, a data security company, network management for mainly small merchants, right? So the merchants who can't afford IT, don't want to spend IT, their brother-in-law's sister is their IT guy. That's not good. We provide a very affordable solution for these small merchants, help them secure their networks, become PCI compliant, and make their networks safe. Um, three offices, St. Louis, Houston, and Fort Lauderdale as well as our corporate. Um, we used to be called Vendor Safe. Some of you guys in the POS space may remember Vendor Safe years ago. We are changed our name to NetSurion. Uh, new executive team, new CEO. We changed our support model, staff, and we have a very laser focus on channel partnerships with CodeCard and others as well. Um, just a brief overview. We're in a lot of different brands: restaurant, retail, healthcare, uh, education, hospitality. We're in. A, we've got 15,000, 20,000 firewalls in the field today that we work with. And we're seeing a very large growth in a lot of small merchants today because breaches are happening. They are the targets, even though they don't think they're the targets they are. Um, at a high level, here's kind of the three things we do, right? So we roll out at what's called a network firewall. So this is not a firewall you buy at Best Buy, right? It's not a Netgear. It's not a Linksys firewall. It's an enterprise-grade firewall. Um, it's used by large organizations across the world, the government uses them, it's a very high class firewall. We ship that out, we lock down the environment, right? So from a point of sale perspective, and let's just talk credit cards, we're segmenting the network, right? So we're taking the credit card processing on its own island, nothing can touch it, uh, nothing can get to that credit card data, or whatever sensitive data it may be, whether it's a lawyer or an accountant, healthcare data, whatever it is, we're segmenting that data so nothing can touch it. We're locking down the environment, so employees that work in a restaurant, for example, can't download movies on Netflix, they can't click on links to Gmail, uh, they can't click on funny cat videos that are gonna install malware on their machines. We block all that. Um, from a Wi-Fi perspective, we offer Wi-Fi, we also offer secure Wi-Fi access points, right? So, um, everyone likes Wi-Fi. When you're sitting in a restaurant, you're waiting for your tires to get put on your car, you want to surf the, your phone, your iPad, you want to have that. You have to do that securely. A lot of people don't understand that. A lot of people want to offer Wi-Fi, but they want to offer with a, you know, think they bought from Best Buy or a certain city. I'm a certain city still in business. But, um, so you, you have to secure it and you have to segment it, right? You want to have a Wi-Fi perspective for your customers that can be for your customer, the owner of the store, the, the patrons that are in the shop, the, the business owner, and also the employees. You want to segment that Wi-Fi. It's very important. And the third thing we do is kind of compliance aspect of it, mainly the PCI compliance, right? So who's here has heard of PCI compliance? Hopefully everybody's heard the term, right? Who here loves PCI compliance? Not one, exactly. So 
It's a burden, it sucks, I get it. PCI compliance is mandatory for every merchant that does process credit cards. They have to be PCI compliant. Whether they do it or not is another question. Whether they go through and mark yes for everything is, is more likely. Um, never ha nothing ever happens until they have a breach, and that's when they pay the fines. There's no one knocking on your, your customer's doors to say, hey, let me see your PCI compliance questionnaire. It just doesn't happen. When there's a breach, that's when the fines come into play, and that's when they say, well, where's your network firewall? Uh, well, where's your segmentation? Why are you allowing open wireless access? Well, you're fine. You lost 4,000 credit cards. Well, I marked everything green. What do you mean? Well, you're still fine. So uh, at a high level, that's what we do. Three aspects. So just a quick slide of this is what we do that really no one else does. There's a couple things we do a little bit differently on top of the stuff I told you about. I won't get into it. It's all techie stuff, uh, but it's good. This is kind of a blocking system, right? So malware does get installed at one of your customer's locations. Cat video, you know, grandma sent a link to someone, they clicked on it, it installed malware. It tries to send out data to the Ukraine, China, wherever it is. We block it and we say, well, you're a restaurant in Fort Lauderdale, why are you sending data to the Ukraine? And then we call them up and say, I don't know what you're talking about. So it's an automatic blocking system we do because you don't do business with foreign countries, why are you sending data out there, right? Uh, second is circumvention detection, right? So most of our clients are restaurant, retail, again, healthcare, um, hospitality, they process credit cards six, seven days a week. Um, once we're in the network, we have our firewall set up, we're monitoring and managing the network. If we don't see a credit card come through one of your customer sites in three days, we call them. We say, you're a restaurant, why aren't you processing credit cards? And they say, I have no clue what you're talking about. Someone bypassed our firewall and they're sending out data. They're still in data that way. So we, it's a fail safe for your customers and what we do in essence, it's a second set of eyes at your customer's location when they're not there. We're monitoring, we're managing, and we're taking care of the network, and we're blocking things. We're alerting them when we don't see a credit card. We alert them when someone tries to plug something in the network, or someone unplugs something from the network. We call your customers on your behalf. So I like this. It's just one grab, but according to the National Cyber Security Alliance, 60% of small breach merchants go out of business. And the reason they go out of business is two things. One, the fines and fees from a breach, PCI compliance, but also the brand reputation. It gets in the water system of the local town and people start talking about it. Well, don't go there, they're gonna steal your credit card. You know, don't go there, swipe your card there, they had a breach. It gets in the water system, people stop going to the restaurant, whatever it is. It can affect the business, it happens daily. You guys see all the big name breaches out there, the Target, the Sony. What you guys don't see is all the little small merchant breaches that happen every day that you're not on the news and people just go out of business all the time. So a couple other stats, just, I'm not gonna scare you guys, but, but I will scare you. Um, 317 million new pieces of malware um, last year. That's 800,000 pieces a day. These are automated bots that go out, scour the internet, try to get in whatever they can, and they breach systems, it happens every day. Uh, employee mistakes, it's an average of 158 days to identify a breach, which means for 158 days, you don't know your breach. That means that credit cards are being stolen, data is being stolen for 158 days, your customers never know, it, or you never know, it's just, it's a fact. Uh, a couple more stats here, again, I'll, I'll scare you a little bit, but, um, the big surge we're seeing today is in POS systems. Uh, malware, we're seeing DNS systems that are, these new bugs that are happening now, these breaches that are happening now. You've seen Oracle, you've seen Wendy's, you've seen a lot of these this year. It's new targeted malware. And a lot of them are targeting the guys who haven't, been, haven't upgraded in a long time, that don't have EMB, they know that their small merchants don't have the tools and the skills to keep their systems updated, so they're targeting these guys. So let me get into kind of how you guys sell this, what you guys do in the field for your sales guys, for your agents, how do you guys go to market with this, right? So there's three main components that how we sell it and how I enable our partners to sell our services. The first one is PCI compliance. It's one of the easiest ones. Everyone has heard of it, obviously, with your hands. They have to be PCI compliant. With our services installed, we're managing, monitoring their network, they have our firewall. We knock off about 70 questions they have to comply with for PCI. So when your merchants fill out a questionnaire, 
we can help them fill out 70 questions. So when they actually fill it out, they know for a fact they're complying with at least 70 of those questions. Now, I can't help them with the other ones of jiggling their lock and their filing cabinet. We can't do that, right? But we can help them with a the big portion of that. And we do help them. We, have, we do provide support services to walk them through an SAQ as well. And we'll help them with that. And this don't check the box, or don't just check the box. That's the guys that, again, go through and just mark yes for everything and just assume they're compliant, and then when they get a breach, they don't know. So the PCI compliance angle works very well because it is required. We help them with 70 questions on the SAQ. So when, when you guys sit down with your clients and you ask them, what are you doing for PCI? They say, well, I have no clue. You've got a solution to talk to them about it. Uh, protection of data, whether it's credit cards, uh, healthcare records, personal identification, social security, healthcare, lawyers, CPAs, it doesn't matter. What we do is we protect data. So whatever type of client you have, our services help. Um, it doesn't matter if they're, they're not worried about their credit cards, they have new technology of tokenization and point-to-point -point encryption, they feel that the credit cards are stable, but they have all this other network that they don't even think about, right? I'll tell you a quick story as we get to it. And then third one is kind of the first line of defense, right? So most small merchants today, they don't think they're a target because that's because they're small. And I hear every day, why would someone want to breach me? I'm just a small guy, I'm just a restaurant, right? But in reality, they're the biggest target because they have no first line of defense. They don't put a firewall in, they don't segment, and hackers know that. And then going back to the malware stat, it's not as if it's a guy in a hoodie, you know, sitting outside a, a Bojangles in Charlotte. It's these automatic bots that just roam the internet and they just find whatever they can get into. And once they find a location they get into, that's when they, they, it's the easiest for them. The hackers are lazy. They go for the easiest thing possible. And small businesses, they don't think they're a target, but in reality, they are the biggest target. Um, and you see in the stats every day, 60% of breaches happen to small, small merchants. Um, so these are the three things we target, right? So when you guys are talking to your customers, you can have three defined ways to do it um, and, and talk about it. And, and they may talk to, well, I've got, I don't need credit card data security. I don't process that many credit cards. But quick story, I used to have a customer that, you guys may not remember this, but the uh, beer exchange where they had, you know, it was a bar and they had all these different types of beers and each one had a different price based on the volume, right? Really hot concept several years ago. Anyways, guys, passed other services a couple years ago, calls me up and says, Mark, somebody's changed my prices on my, on, my, on my screen. I don't know who it is or how long it's been. So he, we backtracked about eight months. He lost thousands and thousands of dollars just because someone changed the prices on his board. That was it. He wasn't in the, he wasn't in the store much. No one told him. He lost thousands of dollars. Not one credit card was stolen. He lost thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, so a couple other things here. Lead with the security, lead with compliance, right? So when you guys go into your prospects, your restaurants, your local stores, you guys are selling process and you're selling point of sale, this gives you another avenue to talk about, right? So some of our sales guys go in, they, they, they pull out their cell phone, they hook up to the Wi-Fi, they walk up to the business owner and they say, hey, is this Wi-Fi secure? Are you guys segmenting your credit card data from your Wi-Fi network? They say no. Was we talk to you about what we do, and then the, and then the conversation starts about security and compliance, and say, oh, by the way, we do credit card processing, we sell point of sale. So it gives you another lead in, another avenue to talk about security. It's hot. Everyone knows cybersecurity. When you say cybersecurity, people peek up, and most small merchants are doing nothing about it. So when you your sales agents are out there, you're talking about it. You can have another avenue to talk about something to get you in the door, work on the process and stuff later. Lead with this. Lead with compliance and security. You know, are you guys actually complying with PCI, or do you just check the box? What kind of firewall do you have? Did you buy it from Best Buy? What is it? So we'll, we'll enable you guys to have questions out there in the field, so you guys can have something to talk about, actionable things to, to, to talk with your prospects about as well. Uh, so two, two last things real quick. Kind of new process. We have this, this data form where it's PCI compliance requirements on one side, what NetSureion does on the other side, and a liability form. So some of you guys in the POS space kind of know about this already, that um, they either enroll in the services or they decline coverage. They decline coverage when they breached, they come back to you from a point of sale perspective and say, hey, why didn't you ever tell me about this stuff? Why didn't you tell me I needed a firewall being PCI compliant? Well, I did. You, did, you declined coverage when you set up our point of sale system, right? Very nice sales conversion tool, as well as a liability form for your business. 
and a very good ducktail to the Q PCI QIR program for those who are in it. And then marketing is an existing base. We do provide outreach campaigns for our partners. You guys can, we'll work with you. We'll give you email content. We'll do free webinar education sessions for you guys. We'll do a, a whole 30, 60 day plan for you guys to reach out to your existing customers. If you want to uh, educate them on compliance security, we'll do that for you guys. We'll help you educate, we'll do joint calls, sales training, we'll do all that for you guys. So we do it anyway. Now, Mark, you keep talking about POS system, but doesn't this also apply to like those, the Verifone and the PACs and Everyone. all the other ones? Yep. That Everyone. So it's not just yeah. a POS product. This, Absolutely. It doesn't have to be integrated with Aloha or Micros. Yeah. It's really any, any merchant that has a terminal is processing credit cards. This could be a product we can sell them. And yeah. What I like about it is I looked at the price points. And, it's, and I'm going, well, nobody's going to spend $1,000 on this box and uh, you know, $200 a month for this. So we're not talking about that. We're talking, you know, you'll get, I, I don't even know what the price is. You can check. We'll send out the prices to each office. But it's, it's a money maker. It's a recurring revenue money maker for you and an upfront money maker for you. Use it either as an add-on tool or a lead-in. I always think about my low-hanging fruit that, I'll, you know, I have all these customers. I think about that. I've had to lower their credit card rates all the time just to keep them so I don't attrit. So I'm losing margins, but I, now I have something to go back and I can regain those margins to go to my existing customer base or something. And this joint sales call, so let's say we're interested in getting this going. Can you do a webinar for my office? Can you do some independent training? We do. Yeah, we'll, we'll train you guys. We'll do individual office webinars. We'll do a, a sales, a support one, a training, you know, anything you guys need, we're going to enable you guys. So let's say my first one, I have a restaurant. Mm -hmm. would, would you do a remote yeah. sales call yeah, with we'll me? Do, we'll do, do a, a call with your customer, your prospect, one of our guys and you and then you guys are on the phone with us helping enable us we'll help you guys you'll close the sale for yeah, absolutely we do well, i like that we'll provide we've got an inside sales team of 20 guys that can help with that i Great. jump on calls all the time you can text me you can email me ray knows my number. so he has a table here too so if you want to get his business card if you're interested in this product yeah go see him yeah to your point it doesn't matter what point of sales system they have what credit card you know we can help anyone. It doesn't have to be credit cards. It could be data in general. We certainly can help. I do. If you have any questions, you can see at the table. But but we're right on schedule here. But real quick, Mike, because you have some good yeah. ones. I always have a good question. Uh, question. Uh, let's say you go to an existing POS system. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Well, yeah. So if you go to an existing uh, POS system and they already have malware. Yep. And we want to sell your product. How can you help them out to remove the malware? They have malware installed already? I don't, we don't have said it might be there. So yeah, so what we, would, the network we can, right? right? So what you would do is just a general vulnerability scan, external vulnerability scan, which we can do. And we would also do an internal vulnerability scan from the internal perspective. If that doesn't show us anything, then we hook up our systems, then we get a deeper dive into the network. If we do find something, then we're going to recommend you wipe the machine. Once you wipe the machine, you start from scratch, and then you're good to go. Now, wiping the machine may not fully do it, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. So from our techs, we know we've got a hot issue here for this location. Let's make sure we keep on top of it. If we see something, we're going to call them. If we see malware trying to send out data, we're going to block it. So for future use, with that malware still there that tries to send out data to the outside world, we're going to block it. And uh, the customers, if they need like a port to be open, they have an 800 number, they call you up. They call us up directly. <coughs> we have separate SLAs for that stuff. They call us up, we take care of it right away. Yep. Appreciate it. I also see as a competitive advantage, if I'm selling a point of sale system against somebody else, and they and I'm up, and I'm throwing this in as part of my package, because I bundle everything into one package, and they're not, this is a competitive advantage that they're going to go with my product, because I'm giving them this. Yep. And, and my competitor is not. So it's a great competitive advantage Absolutely. to do. So let's give Mark a hand. Great Thank job. You.